Hello everyone! Welcome to this session of Painting with Joy where we tackle fall florals. What we'll be doing is starting off with some leaf practice and then we'll be coming up with a fall palette and we'll take that same palette that we practiced and transfer that onto our finished paintings which is inspired by flowers, of course. So I hope you enjoyed this session and let's get started. Okay, I am starting off with a sketchbook here. Um, the PDF that has the reference photos will be in the link underneath this video. And um, I'm just focusing on the leaves right now, I'm looking at them and getting my supplies ready. I will be using watercolors and various color pencils. And here we go. This is a brush that I haven't used in a while or used at all. It's a, a new to me brush and it is from Rosemary Brushes. And here's the watercolors. Watercolor brand that I use is Holbein, which is also linked in the video below. And looking at the different types of leaves and just putting them gently down onto the page. As you can see, I'm just being very loose. I'm doing a maple leaf here and just letting the watercolors dance with each other. Not really worrying too much about how um, it looks or how it is a perfect replica of the reference photo. We're trying to get the energy of the leaf, not necessarily exact copy right doing strange color combinations here because it is fall adding some darker browns i do like this brush it has a strange edge it's, it's long and flat which is fun to experiment with all right, so I'm gonna add another leaf and I'm gonna try to get them to touch. See if the colors will dance and trying to come up with a strange color combination here. Not just the strange color combination, but strange combination of leaves. I, I want to challenge myself and see if they can all touch each other in some way. I'm going to try these ginkgo seed pods. Colors aren't even exactly how it looks on the reference photo. That's okay. Trying to get them to touch the different leaves. All right, here's the challenge. Where do I put the next one? Yeah, I'll go up a little higher. And I'm just gonna keep adding more leaves in a circular fashion. Just trying to look and see the composition. I really like how the middles are touching and it's almost, you know, in the trying to make it round. We'll see how it goes. I'm 
Okay, we'll try to add another color here in the middle. You know how some leaves start off as green? Well, they all leaves start off as green. In the fall, they start to change colors. And so I'm trying to mimic that a little. This one has not completely um, turned into fall colors yet. The one that I'm trying to paint here. And adding some details in the middle. As you can see, sometimes I can't make up my mind and I have to just kind of step back and look again. Adding some brown and yellow just at the tip. And now some red. I don't mind if they dance, like I said. And if they're dancing too much, I just take a tissue and wipe it off. All right. Just taking out the watercolor pencil. This one is by Winsor Newton, and I activate it by just dipping it right into the water. Okay, add some details here. Where else? Hmm. So I'm just going back and forth, trying to see which, um, what else to add. I picked up a little bit of purple. I'm going to try to add another leaf shape behind the green one just to see how that looks. Okay, more dancing, dancing colors that are dancing a little too much. I do like the bleeding with each other, so we're into one piece, the one color bleeding into another. So sometimes I just leave it. And this one I'm just taking a little bit off. Alright, I'm just going to keep going here. Adding another bright red leaf. Getting wild here, mixing in blue with that red, just to see what would happen. So don't be afraid to do that also. Just try some crazy colors. I know I'm trying to stick to fall colors here, but it's okay to add a blue leaf once in a while. Plus, this is a great way when you're playing in your sketchbook, you can kind of see the different things that you might end up liking. Um, for example, I may not love a blue leaf, but the blue with the green stands out, and I really like how that looks. All right, so still trying to do a little bit of a curve with the flower or with the leaves. Adding another one of those seed pods, which I call helicopters <laughs> my kids and i well when my kids were little um we would just drop them from high places and watch them fall down and when they fall they kind of go around like a helicopter which was endless entertainment when my kids were little i actually still do that just for fun even though my kids are older now, I still play with these little seed pods. But I have introduced them to my nephew. 
use three. Okay, adding some more lines. This one is a Stabilo pencil. Stabilo pencil is interesting because it can write on glass, it can write on different surfaces, but I like to use it almost like a watercolor pencil for details. Okay, I'm just looking at what I'm doing here, just trying to see what else I can add. I sometimes like adding these like ghost, I call them ghost leaves, where they're like the lightest gray. I put them in the background just to see it, it adds another dimension when I have a composition and I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, on to the next. I'm turning my sketchbook around, finding a different page that is blank. And let's see here. There we go. This sketchbook I have is an Arteza sketchbook. It works fine. I have a love-hate relationship with the paper. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Um, but it's great when you're just playing in your sketchbook. Okay, the next portion has to do with a fall color palette. Really, what I'm trying to do is having you look at your watercolors. And we are going to try to find the colors that stand out to you or the colors you want to use from this fall palette. You do not have to feel like you have to use all of it. I'm just kind of going through and thinking about what I like. Um, and that's those are the colors that I'll use for my main painting. All right, I'm still looking here. I really like that purplish red. So my purple is too purple. Added some red now. It's getting close to the color that I would like. So I'm really just looking through my palette and trying to find colors that are similar. I like to map out a color palette sometimes because it keeps me from thinking too far um, or getting distracted by other colors. I easily get distracted by all the different colors that I have in my palette. <laughs> So having a little map um, to use when it comes to the different colors is great. All right, just still mapping along here, trying to find similar color or matching the ones that are on the reference photo. Okay, trying to come up with a really good aqua here. And I'm layering blues and greens on top of each other just to see. Now normally I would write the mix down so that I don't forget, but for this one I did not do that. So if you find a color you like and you mixed it not straight from your palette, it, it's wise to write down the mix on the side. That is what's good about a sketchbook. You can take notes. Trying to find other colors. So I'm just going to keep working on the palette here. My palette is complete. I'm going to put the reference photo away and now I'm going to be looking at the third photo which is the floral that we will be using. It's super bright as you can see. Lots of yellows, lots of pinks, lots of reds. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to stick to the colors on my color palette. 
to remind myself of what I want to do, I'm going to use color pencils that correspond to my color palette. So as you can see, I'm using a dark purple here for this pink flower. So I'm recreating the florals, but using a different color palette, using this fall palette that we came up with. Let's see, what else can I add? Adding a few more of those bright pinks, turning them into dark purplish red color. So anything that is bright pink, I'm going to translate to a different color. Okay, those white flowers, I'm going to also change them to a different color. Let's turn those into a almost like a yellow ochre. So just sketching, not really worried about how exactly the flowers look. It's, it's more like a map, really. All right, for this flower, it's going to be more of a purple instead of a peach. And I'm kind of turning it sideways. So don't be beholden to your reference photo. You can change things around. That's the fun of it. All right, just traveling along, looking. Okay, I'm going to turn those yellow flowers into a different color and turn them into a red. So any yellow flowers, I'm going to turn red. I'm noticing there's a lot of pointy petals. When I'm painting, I'm going to try to remember to vary that a little bit. I always like to add some leaves when things are looking like they're floating too much. Not really following the reference photo, I'm just adding leaves everywhere on my sketch. All right, now I'm going to take a darker color pencil and I'm going to add it to my sketch. Just mapping out the darkest spots to remind myself to add those shadow portions. Doesn't even have to be totally full. As you can see, I'm just doing lines love adding lines different places all right um the sketch is looking like it is done and so i'll stop there and we'll proceed to the next part All right, so here's the setup. I have my reference photo on the side just in case I need it. I have my sketch right here, and I'm just going to transfer it to the opposite side. So I'm using a super light gray just to map out my sketch again. And just reminding myself that I am like a little bug just flying along this page. Not really worried too much about exactly how it looks, but just adding my spin to 
um, the floral. And my <laughs> reference photo keeps turning, as you can see. So we'll just have to leave it for now. And I'm going to start with a reddish, purplish color, which I'm just referencing our palette from below. Oops, that's so dark and moody. All right, I'm just going to go with it. Make it a part of the photo there. Took a little red and some water, and now I'm just dragging the paints outward. I'm going from the inside and out. Now on this one, I'm going from the top. Oops, switch that again. There we go. Enter out. I'm picking up some of that purple on the inside. It's like a brownish purple. Just to add to the drama, I guess. That's what I would say. working my way all the way around. Now my reference photo may not have the same exact number of petals, but that's okay. The goal is not to make it look exactly like the reference photo, but to be inspired by the reference photo. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm different, I'm picking up different um, tones of the red and just plopping it down just to see. And so, as you can see, I've taken up more space than my sketch. Handy dandy tissue. Just to plop it down, add some drama. There we go. All right, as you can see, it's still going around. Now I'm using a color pencil to add some details. And these are just really doodly marks, not even details, details, just lines and squiggles. This flower has a lot of detail don't want to draw every line, so I'm just adding a little, like a few of the lines. Not all of them. All right. Still adding more. And just defining a few more of the lines. All right, switching on over to those white flowers. I think that's what I'll be adding next. So I turned all of those white flowers into a yellow ochre. So that's what I'll be doing now. Just smushing down some yellow ochre paints. Remember, just getting the energy of the floral, not really worrying about whether it looks exactly like my reference photo. I'm really kind of just referencing my sketch now. So it went from a reference photo, switched it to a sketch, and then now we're moving over to kind of our own creation. Now I'm working on those 
bright yellow flowers, which we have changed into kind of like an orangey red. So I'll be working through adding some of that. Adding these little jagged petals. That's what I've noticed. So I'm just trying to emulate that with my line work. Or I guess brush work. Trying to find the other bright yellow Right, just adding those energetic marks and trying to see what else we can do. I think I'm going to add some green just to anchor everything down. Add some stems to the flowers. Switching those greens into like darker green because that's what we had on our page. Just trying to add some shadow green just to give it a little drama. Right, so just working my way around the flower here. Let's see. Now I'm adding the bright, well, the purple flower and try to keep it um, fall color. So I mixed my purple, added a little gray just so it's not super bright. And I'm just going to work my way around again, trying to follow that peach or trying to get the energy or the look of that peach floral, but all right. So some of the colors are coarse dancing and that's okay. Just gonna let it bleed a little bit through there. Add some more petals all the way around. going all the way around using a tissue to dab if they are dancing too much as I'm going through here I just want to remind everybody please share your beautiful art um, with me on Instagram at joychard j-o-y-c-h-a-r-d-e tag me so I can see your lovely work or share it on our Facebook group, which I will also um, make sure to link. I don't mind if it goes all the way to the other page. I don't mind um, the spread spreading. <laughs> Sometimes that's just what I do. All right, I'm gonna add some more of that pink was up there, like a, a purpley color like the big floral so I'll add it at the top there we go nope not exactly the color so I'm just gonna try to find the one that I want there we go 
I also kind of don't want it to look like too similar to like the one color that I just did on the light purple so it's trying to vary the reds here sometimes I pick up the wrong color um, and then I just go with it I call it a happy accident <laughs> channeling my inner Bob Ross Adding some leaves now. Just to make it all come together. And these are not really following my sketch exactly. I'm just throwing leaves where it feels good to me. So you just have to sometimes go with your instinct. Just take a look and see will a leaf look good here or should I put it somewhere else? It's kind of um, you have to sometimes take a step back. Picked up a um, oil pastel and now I'm just adding some details while I'm waiting for the colors to kind of dry. The great thing about oil pastel is you just put it on anything, even if it's wet, and even if your paints are wet, just, you know, add it right on top. Works great. So I'm just moving it all the way around. Once again, this is a Oil Pastel by Pentel. Smushing all over the place. Taking a yellow ochre. Trying to remind myself to go with the palette we had. Just smushing in some paints all the way around zoomed in here I am now using a color pencil and I am of course getting paint all over my hand but that's just what happens see messy messy that's okay, that's called artist hands. When you get paint all over yourself. All right, trying to figure out what else to add here. It gets tricky sometimes when you have your paints and your, your sketchbook and everything all around, so it's hard to remember to balance things on the page, but here we go. Just looking at my photo, or not at my photo, looking at my painting and deciding what to add. More of the lines. All the way around. more leaf adding here trying to find a good color to use um let's see here i'm gonna take my green color pencil and just add some detail to the leaves 
and then add leaves where I feel like it needs it. Super small color pencil, really tiny. I know that you can use a pencil extender, but I'm too lazy to put it into one, take it out, so I just kind of use my little ones. And I really enjoy using teeny tiny ones, so that's why they're in that little bowl. I don't mind. It's really like um, like a challenge almost <laughs> to use a tiny pencil. A challenge of dexterity. Right, just adding some de more details all the way around here. Just moving my way through the painting using color pencils. I just love that energy of the weird lines everywhere. Adds to the sketch, I feel like. So just keeping my working my way all the way around, adding some oil pastel now for the centers of those flowers. They don't really look like the reference photo, but it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I, we made up our own flower. What I'm doing really is where it's really dark, that's where I'm adding this brownish or umber marker or oil pastel color. All right, just thinking now. It's up to you whether or not if you want to add the background, you can leave it as is, or add some of that gray background, which I think I will in a little bit. Um, just going through and before I add the background, just defining some more of the spots. Watercolor is super powerful that way. Once you put a layer down, you can put another layer of the same color and then it adds another dimension, which I just absolutely love. Love that. And more strange leaves. Okay, adding the background now, just the, the lightest of the grays. I'm working my way around some of the florals. And it's okay if they touch. That's fine with me. I, I kind of like that. Um, I don't mind if the color stands. But this one, I'll, I'll just outline the leaf a little bit more so you can see it. And it's okay. There we go. And just working my way around the painting, adding background.
we cannot forget those super super darks little shadow lines that we added just makes your floral stand out more so that's what I'm doing here just adding some really dark dark color for those in-betweens and I really like this brush because it's letting me get to some really um, hard to reach places there's no name on this brush but it is I found out a rosemary brush um, and I'll make sure to link to that um, I can't remember the exact name of it so I'll have to look it up but yeah so um, this is the last part just working my way around I hope you enjoyed that session and we will see you next time.